All right, so welcome back to health economics. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go over two concepts in health economics called adverse selection and moral hazard. So last time we talked about the market for insurance, how insurance companies actually eliminate risk in the world by pooling that risk together, how individual people would be willing to pay more than what is actuarially fair for insurance. We also learned how even if people would be financially better off without the insurance, they are actually happier with the insurance because of the concepts of diminishing marginal utility of income and risk aversion. This should have been a very shocking result, but one that's very true in economics. In our previous discussions, we implicitly made a lot of assumptions. While some of those assumptions drove our results, most of the, our assumptions were actually pretty innocent. One, for example, that did drive some of our results last time, it was that the person who earned $30,000 per year was actually very risk averse based on their utility of income, which is why they were willing to overpay for insurance by so much. Most people in the real world are nowhere near that risk averse. We're going to relax one assumption today though, and it's one that we didn't even really mention that we were making. So what was that assumption? Well, in all of our problems last week, I said something like there is a 10% or a 50% chance of getting sick and needing to seek treatment. While I explicitly told you this probability, what I implicitly assumed was that both the insurance company and the individual people knew that probability and that they knew that it was the true probability. In fancy econ speak, we had assumed that that information uh, was symmetric. Okay. <clears throat> In other words, both the insurance company and the person buying insurance knew it and they knew that the other person knew it too. A situation where one party knows more relevant information than the other will be described as a situation where information was asymmetric. With asymmetric information, one side of the transaction has more information relevant to the exchange than the other. The most common example of this that people tend to gravitate to is a car mechanic. In this case, you bring your car into the, mecha the mechanic because it's making a funny noise that you can't quite identify. Now, you probably don't know a whole lot about cars, but the mechanic surely does. Or at the very least, the mechanic knows far more about your car than you do. The fear that you have, of course, is that the mechanic is going to use his or her knowledge of cars against you and try to get you to agree to some costly but probably unnecessary repairs. In most situations in the real world, mechanics taking advantage of you like this is actually much less common than you might think, but it can and does happen because in this case, the seller of the service has more information than the buyer. So let's apply this to insurance. What's interesting is that in this case, it's actually us, the buyers of insurance, who likely have the information that would actually be beneficial to the insurance company and not the other way around. For example, when you apply for health insurance or you go to, to find a company that will sell you health insurance, almost every insurance company will ask you some standard questions. They'll ask you things like, have you been to the hospital in the last year? Have you ever broken a bone? Are you on any medications currently? Uh, do you have a family history of a certain disease or condition? Do you smoke? And if so, how much? Do you drink? Uh, drink alcohol, I should say. And if so, how much? Etc. Etc. The forms seem to be growing longer and longer every single year. So why do they do this? What they're trying to determine is what your likelihood of making a claim on your insurance policy is and how big of a claim it's going to be. In other words, if we think about this from last time, the insurance company is trying to figure out the probability of illness and the cost of illness. Okay. 
The reason they need to figure that out is because they don't necessarily know it just by looking at you. But you might have some privately held information that might help them get a more accurate picture of these two numbers.